Hello friends, Namaste. This is in continuation with our previous presentations on personality. At first we have seen the concept and definition of personality and the stages of development of personality. In the second presentation we have seen trait theory and psychoanalytic theory. In the third presentation we have seen analytical theory of Jung and individual psychology of Alfred Adler. We have very briefly examined the theoretical concepts of humanistic psychology or existential psychology. Today we are going to focus on trait theory. Our major thrust area today is what are traits, what are the different types of traits and how we can measure traits, personality traits. Before entering to that, we have to understand that trait theory is regarded as the most reliable theory, most scientific theory because the trait can be measured. It is more consistent. We will examine details. What is a trait? A trait is a relatively permanent and enduring attribute of personality which is measurable within a continuum. I repeat, a trait is a relatively permanent, yeah, relatively permanent. Slight changes may occur, relatively permanent and enduring consistency will be there. Attribute of personality, characteristic of personality. They can be measured using scales of measurement. We can measure it. And it is occurring in a continuum. To make it clear, I will use a, an item from Alport's Ascendancy Submission Reaction Scale. Very famous uh, personality scale. Ascendancy submission. This is a trait, a personality characteristic. It's in a continuum. Here, if we have ascendancy, here we have submissiveness. Okay. Ascendancy means dominance. Some people are very dominant. Some people are submissive. Receive it, emit. See, items are presented to the uh, respondents. Imaginary situations are provided. I shall give you one or two examples. Imagine you are walking through a busy street. Somebody is coming towards you from the other side. The face is so familiar to you, but you cannot uh, recall who that was. The person is coming closer to you. Will you stop him and ask him, see, where was it that we met earlier? The face is very familiar to me. Will you do this? The respondent can say either yes or no. If he says yes, he has that ascendancy in his personality. If he says no, he is submissive. Another occasion also, another example also. The situation is in a church. In a church, the Sunday this speech is being delivered by the priest. So many people have gathered, even on the veranda, people looking through the window and the door. 
But there are some vacant seats in the front row of the seminar called parish hall. You can occupy those seats. It's meant for you to occupy. The only thing is that you will become conspicuous if you are going and occupying that. Everybody will attend to you. Will you occupy that seat? Okay. Some examples have given. You can say either yes or no. Suppose 50 or 60 or 100 such contacts are provided. For all these contacts, you are responding no, 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 no means you are a submissive personality. That trait is called submissive trait. Here, this is called, suppose a person is saying, oh yes, 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 consistently, relatively, permanent, and I hope you understand now. Say relatively, permanent, and enduring, that means consistently occurring in the personality of a person. That is measurable. Yes, we can attribute value to that. Value for yes, value for no. No, we can. And it is occurring in a continuum. A person's position will be sometimes here, sometimes here. A very dominant person will be here. A submissive person will be here. Right? So I repeat the definition once again. What's a trait? Get ready to answer, right? A, a trait is a relatively permanent and enduring attribute of personality that can be measured within a continuum. We have to see that three very famous psychologists were responsible for they were considered to be the exponents of this theory. One is G. W. Alport, Gordon W. Alport. Another name is R. B. Kettle, Raymond Bernard Kettle. The third one was Hans J. Isaac. These three persons' contributions especially in the initial phase of this development of trait theory are very commendable, commendable contribution. Alport classified traits into three. The first one he calls cardinal traits. Cardinal traits. See, not every person shares with this. Every person possesses this. Only a few persons have these cardinal traits. Cardinal traits means a person is representing that character. If I am not clear. Suppose I say Hitler. You have some trait associated with that name. When I say Shaguni in our Mahaparada. You have some traits associated with that name. Narada, Harishchandra, Sri Buddha. You have some traits associated with these names. These people represent the trait. Such traits, very dominant traits in a, an individual's personality, the personality becomes synonymous to the trait. That, that type of traits are called cardinal traits. I hope it's clear. The second one is central traits. Central traits. Every person has, uh, more or less, having this in varying degrees. As I told you earlier, ascendancy, submission, in varying degree, every person will have uh, this kind of humility. 
honesty, honesty, and anxiousness, introversion, okay, openness, conscientiousness, very many characteristics are there. These characteristics shared by every individual is regarded as central trait, right? And the third type, seems we have to skip a part of type. The third type is called secondary traits. Traits Second. they are called because it's not consistently occurring in an individual, but that individual displays this characteristic in certain occasions. For example, stage fright. In everyday life, he may not manifest this in his behavior. But whenever he has to address a public gathering, perhaps he may have uh, the stage fright. Some kind of phobias associated with certain things, right? Anxiety associated with certain things. Such traits are called secondary traits. Alport conducted so many researches in this area and we have to see the next contribution which is by Cattell, Raymond Cattell. Cattell collected adjectives qualifying human nature, human behavior from the dictionaries. So many adjectives are there in the dictionary. He collected 4,000 adjectives from the dictionary. From these 4,000 adjectives, he reduced these, the number using a statistical technique called factor analysis. I'll make it clear. An example, in English dictionary, anxious, apprehensive, fearful, frightful, nervous, okay, so many, so many words are there. One word is enough, anxious, one word will condense all these characteristics and putting it reducing into one word. Thereby, he reduced this into 171 traits. Again, using factor analysis, he reduced them further and further and further and 16 primary traits were identified by R. B. Kettle. These 15, 16 traits are called primary traits. Popular in the name 16 PF. Primary factors. Shall I give you an example? How do we make butter? From the cow we get milk. Milk is kept for one or two days or yeasting them, uh, it will become curd, more condensed, right? From the curd, if we stir it up uh, for some time, uh, we make butter, right? Okay, in the same way, dictionary words, milk. This is curd and this is butter. You reduce like this. So 16 PF. What are these 16 PF? Let us see. They are warmth, reasoning, emotionally stable, dominance, liveliness, risk conscious, sorry, 
रूल कॉन्शियस सोशल बोल्डनेस सेंसिटिविटी विजिलेंस एब्स्ट्रैक्टनेस प्राइवेटनेस एप्रिहेंसिवनेस ओपन टू चेंज सेल्फ रिलायंस परफेक्शनिज्म एंड टेंशन केटल listed these 16 pf using symbols these are the 16 pf symbol in symbolically i given the list you can rewrite replay it and, and observe it so these are the 16 primary factors uh, primary traits we can measure it using the test devised by these people so much of researchers they have developed uh, scales for measuring all these traits now we will go to the next contribution by eisen hans de eisen hans de eisen he has provided a model which is called a triarchic model in his triarchic model triarchic means three three major traits are uh, used in the model in which he has included several traits putting together uh, in three major dimensions we will put them like that say for example uh, emotionally unstable emotionally stable i am putting it here because introversion extraversion extraversion okay psychotic neurotic See, so what are the three traits? Not traits, three dimensions, major dimensions. Stability and stability, number one. Introversion, extraversion, number two. Neurotic and psychotic, number three. In between, he has put so many characteristics. The major difference between Cattell's and and Alport's theory. here he has integrated hippocrates that theory of body humors that uh, we have seen earlier in the type theory body humor based on body humors hippocrates has classified individuals see hippocrates his classification based on body humors melancholic choleric phlegmatic and sanguinic so a person with stability and extraversion will have these kind of uh, these kinds of behavior in dominant prominent in in that personality a person with unstability and extraversion with psychotic tendency will have this choleric personality type and of course introversion instability will lead to melancholic personality and stability introversion with neurotic tendency will have uh, phlegmatic characteristic this such type of characteristic so so many are integrated in between that it is in a in a in a, in a progressive way going like this he uses a circular uh, diagram for explaining this a circular diagram and uh, i'll present the diagram before you so that you can uh, take down each and every meticulous aspect of this uh, uh, dimensions
right? This is the model presented by Hans J. Isaac. And for each of these trades and the subsections of each trades, there are test items to measure them and a personality profile can be prepared using this plotting it into a graph and we can understand what type of a personality each one is depending upon the responses he uh, uh, gives to the item of the test. Okay, now we are going to see another classification. This classification is a very popular classification. Now we are going to see the next personality types that is called the Big Five. Very popular nowadays for all researchers, for all kinds of management studies, for everything. People are widely using it all over the world. They are called Big Five. Big Five. They are also called Robust Traits. In these Big Five, it's easy for you to remember. Remember them as ocean. Ocean is big, right? Ocean. This O stands for openness. Openness. Some people are having this skin. They are very open. They are straightforward, okay? The opposite will be closeness. Eh? The next one is conscientiousness. Very careful in responding, very thought, th thoughtful before they say something. So conscientious. The others are impulsive. Eh? Then extraversion. I need not say further because we have enough discussion based on this. The other extreme will be introversion. This is agreeableness. Agreeableness and this is neuroticism. So these are called the big five. Remember it ocean traits. These characteristics are, of course, they involve so many other sub characteristics. Each one is measurable. In openness, we have innovativeness, tolerance, creativity, awareness, and growth mindset. In conscientiousness, we have dependability, persistence, punctuality, responsibility, and planning. Extraversion indicates assertiveness, cheerfulness, communication, optimism, leadership qualities, liveliness, and sociability. Agreeableness indicate, indicates collaboration, generosity, honesty, integrity, Kindness. Neuroticism represents emotional stability, confidence, coping with stress, resilience, self esteem, self conscious, and self regulation. I hope you understand how many characteristics are integrated into this. Uh, these five major 
and test items are there to measure them. One more classification of traits can be seen in the DSM classification. You know DSM, Diagnostic and Statistic Measures model, Diagnostic and Statistic model, uh, which is prepared by the American Psychological Association, used worldwide for classifying mental illnesses. DSM-5. In DSM-5, there is another classification of traits. There are also five major traits. But this is more popular. The other also is more or less overlapping. The DSM classification is negative effectivity, detachment, antagonism, disinhibition and psychoticism. Under each of these five dimensions, they have altogether 25 subsections. Under negative effectivity, there are three subsections, seven subsections. Detachment 5, Antagonism 5, Disinhibition 5, and Psychoticism 3. Altogether 25 domains put together in these five. This is how DSM has classified traits. Okay, let us go to the third point we have to discuss. Measurement of personality. For the measurement of personality, for you to remember easily, we will put in an abbreviated form. P Q R S. We have psychological tests that can be classified into these four. This P is called projective techniques. Projective techniques. Projective techniques usually adopt the strategy of eliciting a perceptive experiential background using ambiguous stimuli. Some uh, see ambiguity, ambiguity means that can it's not clear. Some stimuli are presented, either pictures or in blots or something. And the person is asked to explain what it is. This can be subdivided into three sides. One is called pers perceptive, then a perceptive and productive. Perceptive test. The respondent is asked, what do you perceive? The Rosha Inglot test is very famous. Rosha in blood test. Herman Rosha has developed this. Uh, his subjects were hospitalized psychotics. And he administered this test to thousands and thousands of blocks, it is in blocks. And some people perceived movement in these ink blots. Still picture ink blot. Movement perceived means highly abnormal people. They could see movement sometimes very frightening figures in it. Some perceived landscape. So many interpretations are there. To judge it is very difficult. For a perceptive, the example is TAT. Thematic Perception Test developed by Murray and uh, this also have some pictures, ambiguous pictures. Th these pictures are given to, exposed to the respondents and they are asked to explain how this situation has occurred. Situation displayed in the picture, how this has occurred. 
In productive technique, the respondent is expected to produce something. Word association test. They say one word, red. Some people say black. Some people say flower. Some people say so they are producing some responses. You know, sentence completion test. Free painting, free drawing, psychodrama. They are dramatizing and see if they are given a situation they have to demonstrate if they were in the position how will they act likewise right and uh, this these three types the next is questionnaires a good number of personality questionnaires out of which mmpi is the most popular MMPI. The full form is Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, developed in the Minnesota University Hospitals. There are 550 items in this test. Once you administer this test, you can understand which type of personality disorder the respondent has. You can classify them. A very popular test. MMPI. Questionnaires. A list of questions. There is another California personality inventory. CPA. California. Bern Reuter personality inventory. So many tests are there. Questionnaires. So these questionnaires are administered and the responses are collected and analyzed. The next one is the next type is rating scales. We have two types of rating scales. One is Likert scale, other is Thurston scale. In Likert scales, the respondent has to say either yes or no. We have seen the example of output ascendancy submission reaction scale. Either yes or no. We can classify, quantify. But in the Thurston scale, it can be either 3 point or 5 point, can be up to 7 point. I will make it clear with an example. 3 point scale. See, agree, disagree. Okay? Agree, disagree. I shall put it here. Agree, disagree. Of course, in between, we can say neutral. See? Neither agrees nor disagrees. Neutral. And here, we can again strongly agree, strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. Strongly agree, now become, becomes five-point scale. Very strongly agree, very strongly disagree. Okay. This becomes seven point now. Seven point scale. We can attribute values to that. Six, five, four, three, two, one. When item is negative item, the, the value can be reversed. Negative items are intermixed so as to uh, ensure that the respondent is genuine in his responses. So these type of scaling techniques are used for quantifying the strength of the strength of the trait. Okay? Question is. And the last one is S. EQRS. S is self reporting scales. The person's letters, diaries, nowadays Facebook posts. Just before suicide, some people will, uh, will publish a safe, 
ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഇൻസ്റ്റാഗ്രാം ഫോട്ടോഗ്രാഫ്സ് ഫോൺ കോൾസ് മെയ്ഡ് ബൈ ദ പേഴ്സൺ ഡയറീസ് റിട്ടൺ സ്റ്റോറീസ് ആൻഡ് അതർ ഡോക്യുമെൻറ്റ്സ് അവൈലബിൾ ഫ്രം ദ പേഴ്സൺ ദ പേഴ്സൺസ് ഓൺ റെസ്പോൺസ് സെൽഫ് റിപ്പോർട്ട്സ് the letters he writes to others self reports his own explanations about uh, uh, how he feels he or she feels these are called self reports so these are the pqrs techniques usually adopted for measuring personality with this we are concluding our sessions on personality and i hope you benefit out of my presentation and i do expect your feedback uh, thank you very much for patiently listening